Hi, this is Tuvia, and I wanted to show you something. I want to show you this place. Look at this, this nature, look at this river. I actually wanted to stand in front of it and do a small teaching, but the water was roaring so widely, but it was just impossible. I couldn't. So if you look around, you can see that uh, this goes in a valley and you have a lot of vegetation around it. When you go down into it, you actually see how you, you sort of go down into the, the shadow of it. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And I want to give a brief history of this place and, and, and its significance. I mean, I came here and I, I, it looks like Switzerland or Europe or something. I couldn't believe this is Israel, but it is. So this is called Banyas today. It's in the far north of Israel. And uh, geographically, if we go back to biblical times, this is almost not quite but almost sort of halfway between damascus and the sea of galilee we can definitely imagine Abra abraham passing by here on his way from haran in what is now southern turkey on his way to the land of canaan and i mean i love old uh, ruins and stuff like that but when you look at nature the way it is under these rocks and stuff like that it's like yeah, Abraham could have seen these exact rocks, this exact river. It was flowing in this specific spot. It has been flowing here for thousands and thousands of years. Um, so when Joshua and the people came in and took over Israel, this part uh, of the northern Galilee became uh, part of, Naf of, uh, of Naphtali. Uh, the land of Naphtali, and a bit not far from here is also the place where which became the the place of Dan. Now this is north of the Sea of Galilee. It's in the far north of Israel. It's in the northern Panhandle. It's not on the Golan Heights, but it's just at the foot of the Golan Heights. So it's at the foot of Mount Hermon. And this river, it's called the Banyas River today. It has had this. It has also been called the Sion River or the Hermon uh, River, the Hermon River. This, together with three other uh, rivers, they go together uh, a bit further south from here and they form the Jordan River. Then the Jordan River goes through the Hula Valley uh, Lake, eventually continues down and goes into the Sea of Galilee. And then the river that comes out of the Sea of Galilee in the southern point is also called the Jordan River. But this place is very significant also because it, it is just steeped in history. You don't see any ruins around this area, but not far from here, just maybe 10 minutes away, is a place that at the time of Jesus was called Caesarea Philippi. And not far away also is what I, what I said before, the uh, dam. Well, first of all, we can see that in the Old Testament, at the time of uh, Samuel, at the time of David, if they would say something about the whole land of Israel, they would say, from Dan to Beersheba. And we know also that the King Jeroboam of the Northern Kingdom, after the kingdom split after Solomon, he built two golden calves, one in Dan and one in Beit El. So one of them was here in this area. Not right here, but not far from here. It's in Tel Dan. You can actually still see the place where that golden calf was. Now, this place specifically is very close to uh, a place called Caesarea Philippi in the Roman times. And they had a temple there for the god Pan. Now, the god Pan is probably very ancient. It was called, uh, it, it comes from, it was very connected to um, forest spirits and, uh, and things like that. And you, you can sort of feel it in this area, that this is the sort of area where you would have that. Usually he didn't have many temples in uh, cities. He would, they would rather worship him in caves. And there is a big cave not far from here where they used to have a Pan temple right around that area. Now, uh, Herod uh, Agrippas II, this is the, the one that we see in the book of Acts, who meet with uh, Paul the Apostle. He had a palace here, up in Caesarea Philippi, because the Romans, they had two Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, which is here, and the Caesarea we know of, that is called the Caesarea on the sea, Caesarea Marit Maritima. So this is Caesarea in the mountain, Caesarea Philippi. And they have found the uh, uh, what is left of the ruins of uh, uh, of the palace of uh, King Herod Agrippa also. And I want to read a little something from the uh, from the Gospel of Matthew. 
So I want you to imagine this area at the time of Jesus. Now, we know that this far north, it's really in the bordering area. As I said, it's about halfway between the Sea of Galilee and Damascus. In the, at this time, other peoples have already started to come in. It's very close to Phoenicia. If you go in a straight line westward from here, you basically get to the Phoenician town of Tyre. So it's really a bordering town. You have Phoenicians, you have some Jews maybe, who claim that, well, this is part of our ancient heritage, this is part of Naphtali. Uh, we need to keep this place because it's the, these are the sources of, of the Sea of Galilee, which is our water source. There are all kinds of things like that. But there was really a, a, a meeting point here between all kinds of different, you have the Romans, you have the Phoenicians, you have the Greeks, you have the, you have the Jews. And very early, actually, already in Roman times, you have a lot of Nabataeans and Arabs moving into the, the areas around Damascus. So we might have had Arabs here in the area as well, at the, already, already this early. And this is why the place is called Banyas now, by the way, because it's named after Pan. So it became uh, uh, Ban in Arabic and Banyas, the place of Pan. But I want you to open to the New Testament and see uh, when Jesus was right here with his disciples. Now, we can't know for sure exactly where he was, but I'm imagining that it was around this area. In Matthew chapter 16, from verse 13, we read, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. Now imagine this happening in this place. Jesus is far away. This is probably at least a day or two walk from uh, the Sea of Galilee. He has taken his disciples away from the hustle and bustle of Capernaum and, uh, and, and Magdala and, and, and the cities around the, around the lake and where he, the, the Pharisees are talking to him and all that. And he's taking them away to a faraway place. And he's in this spot. So I'm, I'm saying two things about this spot. First of all, I'm imagining they're here around the, in, in this nature area, around the, the, the waterfall or something and talking about this. This is where you really... I mean, often this is where I can feel the presence of God the greatest, when I'm out in the nature, when I see his creation for what it is, without all these distractions from the modern world. That's why I love going camping with my wife, because we, are just, we just feel God's presence when we're out in the nature in, in such an amazing way. And you see this beautiful pieces of art. He's the best artist ever. You see the mountains, the lakes, the, it's, it's so amazing. But this is also in an area where there's friction with all kinds of different cultures and religions. This is a traveling through lane where people are going from Damascus to Phoenicia and Romans and Greeks and Jews and all kinds of things. And this is the place that Jesus chooses to say, chooses as the place where he will be declared the Messiah by Peter. Not in Jerusalem, not in Bethlehem even, not in some sort of central place above everyone but far away and in a cultural center of all the other idols and everything around and here right next to the 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 temple of pan not far away from there jesus is declaring his messiahship he is the king of all of this he's above all of this he's above all the cultures all the idols and everything above the roman gods above Pan, about the Phoenicians. He is the ruler of everything. And I think this is really telling for us also because many of us today will live in cities or in places where there's so many different cultures and expressions and religions around us all the time. I know many places in the US you have both synagogues and churches and mosques. We definitely have all three of those and a lot of them here in Jerusalem. And to just read this and see, yeah, Jesus said, I am the Messiah. God revealed this to you, that this is the Messiah. He is the ruler of the world and he's above everything. And it just helps to sort of see this and, and look above our daily life and all the daily struggles and, and just look to him. 
and I'd like to challenge all of us to do that. This is Tuvia Polak, and do remember, any kind of faith in Jesus is a Jewish faith.